Hello and welcome to Doctor Who the Community Show. I am here with... James, um, also known as Pertwee's Frills. Today we're going to be talking about an upcoming Doctor Who event that you are not going to want to miss. Welcome to the first community show of 2023. It's only taken me three months. As you just saw, we have a very exciting guest, James from Madame Who Swords. He is the organiser of this brand new event and, well, we'll be talking to him throughout the show. You're not going to want to miss it. Interspersed throughout the show will be my interview with him and you will get to see parts of his collection. But just off the bat to help promote it immediately, because I am a big believer in this event and want it to do well. If you miss the Doctor Who experience, specifically the museum aspect, showing off all these cool costumes from the history of the show, you are not going to want to miss Madame Who Sorts. Also, you may have noticed this in the thumbnail and it being sat just on my desk. Uh, obviously a clockwork droid mask. This is proper hard stuff. He gifted this to me, just apropos of nothing. He j Just as we were leaving his house, uh, he said, uh, oh, do you like this, by the way? And I said, oh, yeah, it looks amazing. And he said, you can have it. Who does that? James, you are impossibly nice. Much love to you. But without further ado, let's crack on with the show. In honour of this episode's guest, we're going to start with cosplay. It also helps that, well for me at least, LFCC Spring has come and gone. I've got to say, it's probably the most fun I've had at a convention for, for a long time. Because, you know, you've got your MCMs and stuff and they're always so overcrowded. It also helps that I went on the quieter of the two days, the Sunday. So that's when uh, the two big guests, Mandip and Sasha, or at least the, when it comes to Doctor Who, uh, were not there. The reason I bring up LFCC is because I met a lot of cool cosplayers there. Some I knew, some I did not, but all I would like to share with you. Yes. Let's start with one that, let's be honest, you already know. Dominic G. Martin. He wastes no time, this boy, because he went as the 15th Doctor. Good old shooty gatwa. And general thoughts on the costume themselves, as well as the leaked photos, looks pretty cool. The leather jacket variant is already better than the checked, like, tartan variant that we that was in the official pictures. They both look great, but I could do a bit more colour. Bit more colour, come on, shooty. Like the white shoes with the mostly sort of brown and beige, the rest of everything else. It's kind of like just modern tenant. Come on, do better. <laughs> but I digress. Dominic went as the 15th Doctor and looked bloody amazing. And look, I know everybody says it, but... Dom's just such a nice guy. It's always such a pleasure to chat to him. Much love to you, Dom. You looked great. But you get enough coverage. Next! <laughs> Next is our guest, Madame Who Swords, aka James, aka Pertwee for reals. He, of course, has so many costumes, a costume for each doctor. But this time he went as Colin Baker, the sixth doctor. Probably because Colin was there. And let me tell you, the pictures don't do it justice. It looks spectacular in person. He's got not just the coat, the waistcoat, the shirt, the little ribbon, shoes, shoe covers, trousers. So cool. I always thought James Sutton was the king of accuracy. Nah, you've been dethroned, Sutton. Next is someone I've seen at many cons, but I've never actually talked about as far as I'm aware. The Ginger Doctor Who. He's a Doctor Who fan and he's ginger. Bet you didn't guess that from the name. He also has a very impressive Sixth Doctor costume, but this time I didn't see him in that. I saw him in the Mr. McCoy! We'll get back to you, but quick side note, I've been reading this. I picked it up at LFCC, the Doctor Who magazine issue of when David Tennant was first announced as the Doctor. It has the first ever interview with him on the topic and all sorts. It's really cool, but it also has an interview with the costume designer. Specifically the costume designer for series one, namely Lucinda Wright. Because of course, not only did she design all the different, you know, monster looks, like for example, the Forests of Cheem, but also all the looks for Rose and Eccleston. And she made a very interesting point of how sort of Tom Baker onwards, it always felt more of a costume as opposed to clothes. I think Davison kind of got a pass, but specifically Colin and McCoy got called out 
for kind of just going overboard, going into a pantomime. I think it was specifically stated as more a children's show, as opposed to the other Doctor's outfits like Tom Baker, Pertwee, Troutman, Hartnell, who all very much suited their looks and made sense, as opposed to Colin. But you know what, Lucinda Wright? What do you know? Just designing all the costumes for Series 1? Get out of here! McCoy's outfit looks cool as hell! Did I literally do all of that just to make sure you know that McCoy is great? Yes, I did, because I love McCoy! Sorry. I went a bit crazy there. Won't happen again. Moving on, Rassilon Productions' Rory Guest, the lovely chap. Because Rory is... unique, he went dressed as his techno doctor, and... It's pretty cool. I only joke because he's my friend, but honestly, you look great, pal. Would I ever do it? Absolutely not. But that's because whenever I make a Doctor costume, I'm nowhere near confident enough to wear it in a video, let alone in real life. And also I can dress as 10th Doctor instead. Why would I do anything else? Baron Boutique for the win! Moving on, Oliver Smith! I've met this chap at the last couple of LFC season. He is a lovely guy to hang out with. On the day I was there, he was dressed as Joel from The Last of Us. Flipping great show, by the way. But anyway, on the Saturday, when I wasn't there, I was working, he went as the Eighth Doctor, specifically the Knight of the Doctor variant, which, let's be honest, is the better version. You just need the Knight of the Doctor look with the TV movie hair. Apparently he got lots of compliments about this look, and you know what? Good! I'm gonna give you another one! You look hard as hell! It's the difference between flirting and harassment, isn't it? Next is a guy called Joel, who was a fellow 10th Doctor Stan. Don't like the word Stan, why did I use it? But where I had the Baron Boutique look, he had the Magnoli look. I hung out with him and his lovely other half for a while, and he's a lovely dude, what can I say? Turns out we had possibly bumped into each other before. I've mentioned that I worked Secret Cinema's Guardians of the Galaxy show, Turns out he went to that show. Not only that, but he went both in a sort of Ravager getup and as the 11th Doctor. But I don't remember that, but I worked almost every shift. Finally, from the LFCC bunch, even though there was a lot, I'm gonna show a group picture at the end, one I wanna mention is Gally the Whovian. A, because she was a very nice person, and B, because she did something that I haven't seen a lot of people do. Companion. Not only that, Sarah Jane Smith. Not only that, her SJA look. Or I guess more like Journey's End look. She rocked it, there's no doubt about that. And again, very lovely person. Chatted to her for a bit. Uh, saw her at the meetup. Got this specific picture of the two of us. Looks great. Here is the group picture of all of us there. I don't know where everybody's at. I, I didn't know how to reach out. Specifically the Tom Baker guy I thought was really nice. He, uh, he came over and spoke for a bit. But if you're in that or if you know anyone else in this group picture, please comment them so I can give them the credit that they are due. And before I move on, there's two cosplays that got submitted, so I'm gonna shout them out here. The first is Nicky Boy Crow in his 11th talk to look. You gotta love the purple coat variant, right? Like, I think my favourite will always be Series 5, specifically the red shirt and bow tie, although the blue one's nice. But, god damn that purple jet like, that is probably the most doctory look we've had in the new show overall. Like, that is just the Doctor, right? And finally, Rory Stock. This boy has done something very unique, because he is a Cyberman, but not just a Cyberman, a custom Cyberman, and it looks flipping great. And also the photos are just really cool. <laughs> there ends the cosplay section, moving on to the next one. <laughs> what got you into the show? Oh, I would have been in primary school and one of my mates um, came into school and mentioned what Sonic Screwdriver was and I, I was just like, what is, what is this? <laughs> I saw the Sonic Screwdriver before I even watched the show and I remember looking at the Argos catalogue for hours hoping that um, one of my parents go out and buy me this Sonic Screwdriver. I think I waited until um, David Tennant's first episode on Christmas Day, and that, that was it. Did you miss me? Well, I can't help but agree. So how long have you been a fan for? Um, well, since then, uh, so it would have been, what, like Christmas 2006? Five? Yeah, 2005. We have been talking for a bit before we turn the camera on, because despite being a fan since then, 
It's safe to say your favourite Doctor is not from the new run. No, no. So my favourite Doctor will be John Pertwee. He's just, uh, yeah, I, you can't fault him. I, I just think he's brilliant. Definitely the most stylish, as oh, we can yeah. see oh, yeah. from this. <laughs> you can't believe all of it. No wonder Peter Capaldi shamelessly ripped it off. <laughs> yeah. We know. Doctor Who, the community show, will be right back after these commercial messages. promote these fan films beyond doing full reviews of them but that takes too much time so I'm sticking with my usual route reading the blurb the first is a Doctor Who figure adventure not enough are being made these days fix that community this one is called time and space slash out of time clearly playing on the big finish stuff. Big Finish's Out of Time series is essentially just two doctors meeting. Who doesn't love a multi-doctor? And this one is quite unique. It puts Eccleston with McCoy. What a win. I would never have thought of putting them together, but here they are, and it's great. And it's doing what Big Finish had to fix when doing the Ninth Doctor audios, pitting him against the Sibsmans. Give this one a watch, and if you're still not convinced, you know what it's time for. Clip. This might sound stupid, but what year is it? Your cognitive function has been impaired. Well, you did give me a whack on the head. The solar cycle is of no importance. What was your mission? Enough questions. The conversion will begin immediately. Changing mediums to video games. Minecraft! <laughs> Minecraft always holds a special place in my heart, man. Not only is that uh, where I spent a lot of my youth, but it's also where I met a few nice people for the first time. There was Harry, aka Hudson Media, first met him about a decade ago, well over a decade ago by now, as well as James Sutton of all people. I met both of those on DWO, uh, Doctor Who Online, if anyone goes on that or remembers it. I think it's still around. I remember some of us wanted to make Doctor Who Minecraft adventures. Some of us did, and they're not online anymore because they were rubbish, but this guy, this guy found the formula. Rebellious Productions has made Doctor Who Minecraft Episode 3 Operation Santa. Santa! 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 Ow! How did Luke Ragan do it? Santa! Ha! One! The Doctor and Simon pay a visit to Sontar, where they become engulfed in the raging battle between the Sontarans and their mortal enemies. The Rutox! But I thought it was the Rutons. Plot twist. After arresting the Doctor and throwing him into prison, the Sontarans realise his potential in aiding their troops on the front line and recruit him to help. Can the Doctor and Simon bring an end to this war before both sides are destroyed for good? Doctor, you know I trust you completely, but even I'm not sure about this one. You will be fine. I've done this before, you know. And did it work? Oh, right, well... I would say about 50% of the time, yes. Next is a unique one that I struggle to put into words, so I'm going to rush through to the clip. Doctor Who Fractured Reality, a mad teen with a box. This is by Pear Crazy 123 Here's a clip. Nice try, kid, but I sell the tricks. I don't buy you. I just figured it out. There's something I'm even more afraid of than you. Losing his lives. lives. Hey! You heard of DW2012? <laughs> they really do just keep outdoing themselves, and I'm not just saying that because I was in one. <laughs> Series 5, Episode 3, Into the Time Loop. It's inevitable that in time travel fiction, the idea of a time loop will arise, and it's even hit the fan film community like a shovel to the face. Check it out if you haven't, or the clockwork droids will get you. Here is a clip! Ah! 
Megan! The clockwork droids never sounded like that. What did they sound like? We did not have the parts. You will be repaired. No, I... It was just a guy's voice, wasn't it? I want to watch that again. I know it has two problematic actors in it, aka Noel and the woman who plays Renette, but goddamn man, that script just holds it together. You thought I was done shouting out Russell on Productions? You idiot. Usually promoted for his audios, he's dipped his toes into the fan film world with his original Techno Doctor. It's quite an abstract piece, so again, I'm struggling to quite put it into words. Why don't you take a look at this? Little clip. Back to the world of video games, Cape Who, aka Capey Boy Productions, has created a fan film series in Gary's mod. Specifically, we're talking about Series 2, Episode 10. A Fracture in Time. Now, where have I heard a name like that before? The Cape and Gary have been summoned by the great evil, Dida Cape. Will the Cape find the answers he needs? And if so, to what cost? To potentially find out the cost. Here's a clip. What does that mean? Uh, it means the Tower of Shields are down. And that means... It means we're going to be pulled into the heart of the nebula. <laughs> One more thing before we move on, because it's kind of a self-promo. Not too long ago, I did a collaboration with Mari, aka RKE2006. But instead of promoting the actual video itself, I'm going to promote over to her channel, because she did a great behind the scenes. I love behind the scenes stuff, but only when it's presented in a fun way, and goddamn this one is. All the love in the world to Mari for creating this great animation for me, as well as creating a very fun behind the scenes video. Here's a cheeky clip. In the middle of October, I received the uncut voice recordings from Jack. I can help with that. I, I don't know who that's supposed to be. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, it's you. Okay. <laughs> Doctor Who, the community show, will be right back after these commercial messages. So, Mr. Eccleston, what made you want to come back to Doctor Who after all these years? Well, yeah, it was a very tricky decision, but eventually, I, I don't know, I just found it in my heart to to carry on this part, this character. Whilst we're doing this, what's a Zabi? The event, uh, what's it called and what's it gonna be? Um, the event is called Madame Who Sods. Um, it will just be a display of various bits. It will be um, Black Archive, unit themed, and just uh, basically walk through time for the last six, 60 years of Doctor Who. Would you say it's quite similar to Doctor Who experience? Um, probably, yeah, yeah, it will, yeah, it, there will be plenty, plenty on display. It will start from Hartnell, going right the way up until Jodie, possibly David Mark II. Um, oh, really? Yeah, we'll see, see what happens there. Can you say some of your favourite items from the collection that will be on display? Oh, probably the costumes, Doctor's costumes, especially Pertwee. The jewel of the collection is the original um, time rotor. I'm for, so glad you for, it. <laughs> It's literally to the right of us, and my god, does it fill up a room. Yeah. And it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about it? It would have been used by Chris Rexon and David Tennant, series one and two. So it is the screen used Yeah, prop. it's uh, the screen used original. It was damaged during uh, filming and taken out between series two and three, and it's now in the front. It's it's really cool. That's all, I, honestly, I wish I could articulate how cool it is. But just having the screen use time rotor next to you whilst you're talking, yeah. it's it's a little distracting, but also the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And how did you come across it? A friend of mine, uh, James Sutton, who you've also interviewed, he, he referred me to a prop dealer. It was a phone call that was surreal. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll come pick it up tomorrow. So uh, yeah, we agreed on a price. And yeah, it, it's it's just strange to own. Um, I, I I watched it age twelve going up and down on telly and it's yeah it's now in, in my front room. And if you want a time rotor in your front room, <laughs> talk to James Sutton apparently. <laughs> Art, short for artsy-fartsy, is a medium in which people express themselves through drawings, sculptures, and other such visual 
things. Perfect example is Kyle, who created this great 14th Doctor piece with him in the London Eye. What's he doing there? I don't know, but it looks cool, and that's the point. And now you know what else I like? 3D models. You know who does 3D models? ArtStation. He has a whole website full of Daleks and such, and you need to check them out. Otherwise, I will hit you with my shoe. The Special Weapons Dalek looks so cool. How has the Special Weapons Dalek not been, like, adapted for the modern series? Imagine the Special Weapons Dalek, but in the Bronze Dalek style, or even the Paradigm. Oh! Oh, oh. I like models, but not just 3D in the computer models. I like physical models. Not just physical models. I like physical life-size models. So thank God, Chart666 has created a Dalek Emperor. Not the one from the new series. Oh, no, no, no. The objectively better one from the Troughton era. Look, I love the modern one too, but goddamn. Imagine standing next to that. Imagine it. It must look amazing. I do have a question though, chart. Can you get in it and move the eye stalk around? If so, can I do that? And very immediately, please. Here's all the money. <laughs> he's part of the Project Dalek lot. You may know about them. Uh, so he's also got a Davros and a Dalek and an Ice Warrior. And oh my God, Doctor Who not doing it for you? He's got Wally. -E. He's got Wally, -E, the robot from Wally -E called Wally. -E. I'm going insane. As someone who has seen his Davros and Dalek in person, goddamn, it looks incredible. Something fell down. Just saw your name is Connor Hart. For some reason, it was just coming up as chart. Apologies. I've only recently come across what a zine is, essentially a conglomeration of art pieces and, and stories and short stories and poems and stuff. Just recently, there's been one called The History Between Us about the Doctor and importantly, the Master. <laughs> the Master. With a cover by Rogue, who is a fantastically talented artist, it seems to be a celebration of The Master. Coming autumn 2023, fights and confessions across time and space, love and hatred through the ages, and couples therapy. Yeah, that tracks. Just like this tweet says, you do not want to miss it. Autumn 2023. Buy one! Do you not want to give money to people in the community? Fair point. They're gross. <laughs> Luckily for you, you mean bugger, it goes to charity. All profits from the zine will be going to Micro Rainbow, a charity doing amazing work providing safe housing for LGBTQ plus refugees in the UK. If you want to keep up to date on this project, link is down below, as well as everything I've been talking about today. Last but not least in the artist section is photographers. Have you heard the good word of the Dr. Docker? He has been going on with his comic book cover series where he goes to conventions, takes cool pictures of people in Doctor Who cosplay and put them on a Doctor Who cover. And goddamn does it look cool. And I think my favorite out of all of them is the Meg uh, Ace cover, cause you can't go wrong with Ace. Wicked! And he seems like a nice chap. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's evil. Maybe we should take him out. I'M NOT FALLING FOR YOUR LIES! But that is all from the art section. I know, I'm crying too, but on the inside, because I'm a man. Toxic masculinity, what's that? Going back to the event, where did the idea to do this event come from? Um, I think it's always been in the back of my head. I've had mates who've grown out of it and we've always spoke about, oh, we need to do an event, and we need to do one in our hometown, Essex, and things like that. Going to a few events, um, myself uh, seeing some stuff on display and I just thought I could probably do this I could probably do this myself so uh, yeah giving it a go all, all for good cause. So what is the charity and why did you choose it? Um, it's Dementia UK um, I picked it um, mainly because I generally like I was saying earlier to you, um, I generally get on with old people I think the old, it's the old people that um, get affected by dementia and they remember this last 60 years of the show that we, we all love. I've got members of my family, um, friends that are affected by it. Um, so yeah, I couldn't think of a better cause really. It is really cool that it is a charity event because yeah. let's be honest, you could make 
wank off oh, something yeah. like this. But the fact that it's going to a good cause, yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's probably cost me more amount of money. I, I know I've, I've sat down a few times and thought, it'd probably be, just be cheaper for me just to give the money to the charity <laughs> than, than what I've spent out on uh, yeah. organising. But with this, it, I mean, you, we were saying how you don't know if it's going to be a one-time thing or a yeah, yearly thing. Yeah. It could just go on to keep making more yeah, money each year. Yeah. So really, it's an investment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, an investment that fills up a house, but an investment. <laughs> Obviously, it's not just you who has supplied all of these things. You've commissioned, yeah. you've bought. Yeah. Can you name some of the other names that are involved um, in this? Yeah, um, Stephen Ricks. Um, he's made the majority of my costumes. Um, a lot of Doctor Who fans will know him. He made this in its entirety. He is a real spot on for replicating Doctor Who costumes. I've got bits from James Burgess. I've got bits from James Sutton. Tom's refurbishments. Various bits I've made myself. Plenty of people out there have bought bits off of. It's a standard question when it comes to interviews, yeah. but favourites will arise yeah. at some point or another. So I, I will be kind and I will dismiss anything made by someone else. Yeah. So out of your own collection, like something you've made or something you've bought, what would you say is like the sort of pride of your collection? Oh, um, probably... John Pertwee's watches. Which are in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in the display. Off. Tracking them down from a few blurry photos, and I've got a good friend, Lewis, who's a watch enthusiast. He works for Rolex, and what you don't know about watches ain't worth knowing. And I showed him a couple of pictures, and he, he said, oh, I think this might be this, and we eventually tracked some down. There was a guy in America who, who I sort of inspired, and he, he tracked another one down. I think they're, they're probably my favorite things, yeah, because no, they're things that no one else would bother about. But there's a lot of people now that are going out buying the global watches for their collections. So you like the little bits, like the things yeah. you wouldn't necessarily think of. Yeah, I, I love the things that, unless you're a real die-hard Doctor Who fan, you'd be like, oh, that is that is that, and that's that's from that episode where a normal person and like non Who fan would just be like, oh yeah, that's a that's a, just a decanter. But that's... then we're like, no, that's that's the one, the decanter that Capaldi held. <laughs> Audio productions, this is when you take someone's voice and put a story to it. That's literally all it is. Fact, I think this is a better shot. You don't see my ugly face, it's pretty good. Now I will sit down though, cause I'm lazy. First things first is from the Cyber War universe, specifically Gallifrey Cyber Wars volume, The Deadly Gentleman. That's what they call me, cause I got looks to kill. The Cyber Wars have begun, and Lord President Galadon must do now what no one, if not in desperate need, would do. He summons the deadliest of warriors, the Master. <laughs> but he will not be alone on this mission as he is joined by the poet who is less than happy to work with one of her oldest enemies. Who is Agnet Malavarus? What is the heart of the Cybermen? And what will happen between the master and the poet? Find out in The Deadly Gentleman Looks to Kill. You need somebody to go in and free him from those mundane metal monsters. Not exactly. Oh, I see. He's gone native, hasn't he? He's been upgraded and now he's more Cyberman than Time Lord, right? Doctor. Doctor Who. A mysterious title. Doctor Who, the Mysterious Doctor. Here he is! Doctor Who, the Mysterious Doctor Adventures, Series 1, Episode 4, Project Infinisaur, Part 1, by IAT Productions. When a mysterious spacecraft crash lands a few miles away from the park's observatory, the Doctor, Craig and Skylar arrive just in time to uncover the mystery on what it is. However, Unit is now under control by a mysterious Mr. Stathis, who has taken full control over the operation. Yet there is something much more sinister going on, and the Doctor may just have a bigger part in it. The description didn't sell you? You're so difficult! Have a clip instead! You clearly don't understand what we could be dealing with here. And you do? Must I remind you, Brigadier, who is in charge here? You gave your power to me, remember? Dell Studios. No, not Adele. Dell Studios. No, not the computer. Dell. 
Adele. And I'm gonna cherry pick one of his audios specifically because of the lovely Alia E. Tori features. One virtue, a thousand crimes. This is a story originally by Neil Gaiman. It's Alia as the Corsair. You can't lose. Don't believe me? Have a clip! How did the Hand of Omega get to the City Obsidian in the first place? Oh, good point. We'll probably need to hide it there a few hundred years ago. Although, that means we'll have to steal it from Omega, Rassilon, and the other bloke first. Of course. That'll be interesting. Something Blue Audio has created an audio with semi-accompanying visuals, which more audio productions need to do. It's what keeps me engaged. Unless your chimes are midnight, then that's that's like the one exception. And Dalek Universe, but that's that's about it. Doctor Who Revenge of the Gestalti, featuring the 42nd Doctor. My god. What year do you think it'll be when we get a 42nd Doctor? Because it's like it's gonna happen, right? Doctor Who's gonna go on forever. It's don't know what I mean by the accompanying visuals? Learn. Clip. So what's a gestalti? I don't know. What's a gestalti with you? Hey, that's racist. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll try to do better in the future. Anyway, the gestalti are a conglomerate hive mind species. Every individual is an extension of the same consciousness. So the entire species is one guy? Well, yes. That's why they all look alike. Really? What did I say? The Hourglass Universe is another channel that didn't specifically pick a video, but sounds pretty cool to me. I think right now it's more of a concept than it is a full series, so go subscribe if it looks intriguing and maybe, just maybe, interesting things shall come. This community has many different talented folks in it. This could be another one. Get in there early. Luckily, there is a video on their channel called What is Our Glass Universe, so that's handy. Check it out, and if you're interested, smash that like button! <laughs> now, of course you might be wondering, Professor, why are you crashing? Why? Who's chasing you? Well, uh, well, let's say that when you piss off an intergalactic warlord by cheating in poker, you better make sure they can't traverse the bloody space-time vortex. <laughs> And finally, TimeGate. They have released a teaser. Observe it now. In full. I remember it well. Hello? Where am I? Seems like a lifetime ago now. Doctor, what have you done? There's no use rushing these things. I'll fix this. I can fix this. <laughs> I just need to rest. That is the end of the audio section. We're nearing the end of our show. Stick around, though. You might like it. And if you don't, you're wrong. Doctor Who, the community show, will be right back after these commercial messages. <sighs> Going back to the name, because obviously Madame Hussauds, it's pretty obvious where you got the name from, but um, so why did you select that? It started as a joke. So I've got, <laughs> I've got my room here um, and it's my Doctor Who room. And then I started collecting the full-size mannequins and the guy who... The mannequins, by the way, that have scared me on three <laughs> separate occasions and I've not been here long. They was made by a guy um, who worked for Madame Hussauds Blackpool and he, he also does stuff for the NHS, he makes prosthetic eyes. He was telling me bits about like Jodie Whittaker's eye. I was like, oh, there's a fleck in her left eye and I'm like... I'll take your word for it, I believe you. And then after I looked, he, he, he's bang on with his sculpting. And yeah, so I ended up with kind of waxwork. So Madame Who Swords become the name of my um, room. And yeah, so that was that was the name of the event. I like how your room is essentially being turned into an entire yeah. hall. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like a lot of people, obviously in the fandom, myself included, have their nerd room, yeah. which they have <laughs> been graciously offered by whoever they're living with. But yours has been turned into an event, yeah. so I think you win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, is the most important question for those who want to come to the event, and I cannot recommend it highly. I'm definitely going to make the trip myself. Where is it, and when is it? Um, it is in Upminster. Um, it's a town close to where I live in Essex. It's a 
five minute walk, not even not even a five minute walk, two minute walk from Artmitz Station, which is the last stop on the district line. So it is pretty easy to get to. It is on the 30th of April and the 1st of May, just the morning. So I need the rest of the day to pack everything away. Hopefully I can get it packed away in the rest <laughs> of the day. Postcode is RM142BB. It's at St. Lawrence Hall. Um, right next door to St Lawrence Church in Upminster. That has a bit of history to it itself. It was um, where the speed of sound was first accurately recorded. Oh. Yeah, so. How um, on brand for Doctor Who? Yeah, that's, that's, so I found that out afterwards. The hall itself um, was used as a World War II hospital. Back in the day, yeah. So he's uh, now so it's filled with like empty child yeah, and stuff. plenty of history. Gas masks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like we're going back. <laughs> if anyone that can come would be great. I'm doing a, f a five pound entry fee. Uh, it's all going to Dementia UK. I've got a few friends bring some stuff. David's bringing another Tardis. I've got a friend just up the road who's got another Tardis. A fella I know, he's bringing another Dalek. Hopefully he's gonna invade the town centre and obviously if you want to come along please please do bring as many people as you want as he said it's all going to charity so it's for a good cause and you get a fun day out it's a win-win and if people want to keep up to date with the project uh, or things because I'm not showing everything there is so much where can they find you um I am on Instagram as Madam Who Swords I've also got another my main account Pertwee's Thrills some of my collections on there um I've got lots of bits I haven't shown before but yeah Madam Who Swords is showing just a sneak peek of little parts and you just have to wait to see on the day the whole the whole uh, display welcome to other oodities it's taken me this long to come up with that pun title basically this is anything that i didn't think fit in the usual categories but i still wanted to promote because i'm just such a nice guy i'm not i'm awful first is battles in fandom specifically their latest episode and i would love to talk more about it but jack alexander the host of the uh, an awful lot of running podcast as well as battles in fandom has not sent me the clip yet but hopefully he has and if he has here is a clip why right. do i need to play of one no. right C can i just ask what and i cannot stress this enough the f has just happened <laughs> Uh, end of argument. Good f***ing luck, you absolute posers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Gone for a, an up-and-comer. Uh, his name is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine in your mind, if you will. Wait, me, sorry, are you sticking your... with that? <laughs> Excuse me, Josh, is it your turn to talk? Jack Alexander, lovely guy. As far as I'm aware, I'm on to you. Next is a Twitter account called Second Hand Who. Essentially what this is, is you send in pictures of local shops and such saying that you found Doctor Who items and they tweet it out for people who might be interested. Because there's Doctor Who books and toys all over the world and there might be something that you want specifically and who knows someone might found it in Swansea and you live in Bristol, I don't know. It's a really cool fan effort, it's bringing people together and I like that. Go give it a follow if you have Twitter but if you don't have Twitter I understand, it's a hellscape but only if you run in the wrong circles. Run in the right circles, run with second hand who. The next one is one I can't actually play due to copyright. Dalekton. It's a Dalek musical parody of Hamilton. Take my word for it, it is glorious, created by both Mataf Productions and Doctorus Prime. Giggles will be had. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. And finally, Mario Bowser has graciously offered me an early video of a series that he's going to be doing in November to celebrate the 60th. Basically it's season reviews, specifically from the classic era, maybe from the new series too, you never know. But this is of season one, the Hartnell season one. It's a good 20 minutes and it is worth your time. So check out this clip and if you like it, go on over to him and subscribe and wait for its eventual release in November. Season one is by far the most intriguing season of the show to watch, especially for modern audiences. The show was so different back in the early 60s, especially because it used to be focused on education, which is what led to the inclusion of pure historicals such as Marco Polo and the Aztecs. In terms of education, I think this season does succeed at that in certain episodes. And so ends another episode of the Community Show. Woo! Flies by, doesn't it? I want to give a big thank you again to James of Madame Who Swords slash Pertwee Frills for allowing me into his home to check out his glorious collection. Still shocked I saw the timer at a man. God damn. Like, David Tennant touched that, and I touched that, so, like, we touched. <laughs>
that's disgusting. But one final push in case I haven't pushed it on you enough. Madame Hussauds. Essex, 30th of April and 1st of May. I will be there certainly on the Sunday. I'll even be filming stuff. You want to be filmed? I'll film the hell out of you. And also a big thank you to you at home for watching. If you're watching to this point, we're friends now. Besties. Ah, oh, I'm still not over the Sontaha hand punch thing from earlier. God damn, that hurt. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next episode. Subscribe or else! <laughs>